Tracy Robinson is a documentary filmmaker, freelance video editor, and the director and producer of The Matter of Life, a documentary that addresses the issue of abortion through science, philosophy, history, and powerful personal stories. As one writer puts it, Tracy is a filmmaker that hopes to make abortion unthinkable. Welcome to Inroads, where we share real-world stories of digital evangelism and provide you with tips and resources to use today's technology to spread the gospel. Learn more about us and watch our free video series at appianmedia.org. During this week's episode, we're highlighting the great work that Container Solutions, Inc. does in providing high-quality, custom-engineered packaging solutions, including the camera and equipment cases that we took with us on our recent production trip to Turkey. We'll talk more about them later in the show. Well, Craig, we met Tracy at the 2020 Christian Worldview Film Festival, and uh, she actually came and saw Searching for a King, and then we, we struck up a conversation afterwards and yeah. kind of got to learn a little bit about her, and here we are, yeah, having a bigger doing conversation. Yeah, some really, really cool things. Yeah. So Tracy, first of all, kind of just give us a background, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you guys for having me. Um, yeah, like you mentioned, I have been in the freelance video editing world, uh, mostly the video editing documentary world for my career, and just decided to, well, fell into directing about four years ago, and, uh, but yeah, documentary world and editing has really been my wheelhouse. And so, um, yeah, I'm currently in San Diego. Um, I, my bread and butter is editing, but my passion project is, as you mentioned, the matter of light. And we're definitely going to talk more about that uh, later in the show. I I'd love to know, um, was there a moment that set you on this path? Was there a a, a movie you saw or some conversation that you had that you said, I, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, right out of high school, I went to film school and, um, I didn't really, that was sort of a naive move in hindsight. And I didn't really know what that would look like for me, but I knew that I was a creative type and I loved films. And so it was, I went to Brooks Institute in Ventura and in my last year of film school, one, I discovered that I liked video editing. I was editing my director's reel (laughs) and I thought, Hey, I kind of like editing and I'm okay at it. And then also in my last year, I became a Christian. And so, um, I didn't really know what that looked like, uh, for my career still but through a chain of events out uh, after film school i started to work at a company called lynda.com which is now linkedin learning but at the time it was lynda.com and in addition to tutorials like software tutorials they they had this documentary team and i was lucky enough to like get up become a pa for that team And then eventually they needed an assistant editor and eventually they brought me on as as an editor. And that kind of catapulted me into documentary video editing specifically, which I learned that I really loved. (laughs) Like people appreciated me and they they saw that I was good at it. And I I really loved it. Like it was challenging and new and and just I I really uh, loved being part of that team and that just that storytelling process i think you and craig can relate because it takes a special person to love sitting and sifting through hours of interviews and footage and putting it into a timeline (laughs) it is i you know we're all storytellers i would call directors a storyteller Mm -hmm. and and actors are telling stories um but editors i feel like we get we get the final pieces of the puzzle yeah and we get to decide uh, in many ways how that story goes together. Do you get this when you share with people, they ask you what you do and you say, well, I'm a filmmaker or I'm a, you know, I'm an editor. Uh, what kind of reactions do you get? Well, 
for regular people, I usually lead with, I'm a video editor. Um, <laughs> and then maybe <laughs> go into, uh, saying that I work, that I'm, I'm doing an indie film also. Um, if I lead with, I'm a filmmaker, I feel like people are more puzzled. I feel like <laughs> I'm eccentric enough to begin with. And I, uh, you know, don't need to add on another layer of confusion. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm in San Diego, which is not a filmmaking town. So it's a little more unusual and people, people are generally trying to figure out how that makes money like filmmaker. Oh, okay. How, what does that look like? So, mm -hmm. but when I say video editor, it's a little more tangible and people can see that, Oh, you're, you're legit. You're not just crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> so are, is this, is this full time for you, Tracy, or do you have uh, some other work? Are you working for other clients? in addition to producing the documentary? I, my biggest client right now is a mega church in San Diego. I'm their video editor. Um, I'm taking some time off or more time off from them to really, because I'm on the finish line of this, of the matter of life. I'm trying to submit it to Christian Worldview Film Festival um, this fall. So, um, but yeah, that is, that's been my, bread and butter this past couple of years has been um a church here and then other like some other clients as well but mm -hmm. predominantly a, a church here that does a lot of video it's very mm -hmm. production heavy so you're getting you're getting to do what you love yeah. and and call it a career yes and it's not just a side yeah. gig that's nice. as as many people might might assume yeah. for us yeah Absolutely. so when uh, when when people think about the christian film industry we normally think of these box office successes like I Can Only Imagine mm -hmm. and War Room. What drew you to documentary? Um, what about that spoke to you? Well, first of all, I'm a big fan of the Kendricks and the Irwins, and I love narrative film. And I just, I hats off to people that can do it with a Christian worldview. It's incredibly hard um, to fight that battle. <laughs> <laughs> and to make great movies with a Christian worldview. One favorite I recently saw is Selfie Dad uh, by Kappa Studios and um, just a lovable lead role there um, with Michael Jr. But what drew me to documentary was just sort of the grace of God and having it be my wheelhouse. Um, it's just something that was easy for me to jump off and start doing. Um, you know, all you need is a camera and the ability to edit. So mm -hmm. uh, in real life, like you, you know, you often don't need to pay or find great actors because real life is better. To me, it's better than make believe because it's real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, um, but I do love, I still love narrative and I'm inspired by narrative. And I think there's, there's things that narrative uh, stories can ingrain in you that documentary can't and then vice versa. Mm. Um, but more recently with the matter of life kind of teaching me and, and just what I've realized in the past couple of years or even the past year has been how important it is for Christian filmmakers to be documentary filmmakers. I mean, unless it's not your calling, but it's so important to make these really rich uh, documentaries that that glorify God, but also inform and inspire and edify the body of Christ and also non-Christians, but mostly the body of Christ. Um, I, I believe that uh, a lot of Christians are, especially here over here in California, <laughs> are being indoctrinated by secular worldview and um, don't have that Christian perspective of what's going, like the social issues in our world. Mm -hmm. And so we need to communicate and we need to be salt and light in the world. And I think documentary is a great way to, to communicate what's going on and how people like offer people uh, the lens of the Christian worldview. Yeah. So. I think we're seeing um, kind of this rebirth of documentaries uh, with Netflix and with uh, you know Amazon. All of these uh, streaming services seem to be 
bringing out more documentaries. It seemed like, you know, 20 years ago, a documentary, you'd only see it on PBS mm -hmm. and it was kind of dry. No offense, Ken Burns. I love Ken Burns. <laughs> but I love Ken Burns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but now there's this resurgence. And so documentaries have right. um, a new uh, cool factor, I guess you could say. Um, so let's talk about your documentary, uh, The Matter of Life. Uh, it deals with a very sensitive, you know, and sometimes very polarizing topic of abortion. Uh, you know, what prompted you to pursue this subject matter for your for your piece? Well, after I left Lynda.com, <clears throat> um, I wanted to do my own production company or my own thing. I didn't really know exactly what that looked like, but I had been I, I had some clients that were nonprofits. And I was doing promotional style documentaries for them, like their fundraising or their branding. So I decided to sort of make that my sole proprietorship. And I was doing video for a, a pro-life pregnancy resource center in Ventura, California. And I was really, I was really moved by how they were helping a lot of women, a lot of women in crisis dealing with unplanned pregnancies. And I had never heard of, in my late 20s, I had never heard of a pregnancy center, uh, a resource center, and um, was just really touched by, by how, like, how loving the people there were. And um, I wasn't, I was in the pro-life world with pro-life people, usually ladies, like, it's, it, I felt it was like a little, like a knit, a niche of Christian people that were kind of involved in this little ministry. <laughs> and as far as I was concerned, even as a Christian, I was pretty much pro-choice. I mean, I think I was one of the people that said I'm personally pro-life, but who am I to enforce my beliefs on others? Like that was my thinking. That was my point of view. So I was in it. What changed for me was I was invited by my friends at the pregnancy center to an apologetics night. It was an event where there was going to be a speaker and the topic was making abortion unthinkable. And um, that really puzzled me. I'm like, how do you make such a complicated, nuanced issue? Un like, how do you make that black and white? Or how do you make it unthinkable? Because to me, um, thinking about making abortion illegal or or just having a world without abortion was was weird it was just strange to me and so i went to this event and the speaker was alan schleeman of stand to reason he's an apologist and in <clears throat> the span of less than two hours he gave a concise case for the full humanity of the unborn from the moment of conception and it was very winsome and it was very clear and logical and he used the science of embryology and it was just, it's just looking back, it's so obvious. <laughs> like the information is so um, obvious, but nobody had ever, I had never come across that, that argument before or that information before. Um, mind you, I grew up in public school in Southern California. So, <laughs> um, and then I had never heard it at church either. So, <clears throat> so in that moment, in that evening, I was very struck. I, I, the idea for a documentary was downloaded to me at that moment. Um, I, cause I was passionate about the audience that this could reach. Uh, he didn't have to use the Bible. It wasn't, uh, entirely like a Christian world. Like it wasn't, he didn't need to use any Bible verses. Um, like you could communicate this to a secular audience, I thought. And so, um, and it was so much clearer to me. And so I was just really passionate about what I had just learned and wanting to communicate that to others. And then in my, in my world is, is filmmaking and documentary. So, um, I just became really struck right away mm -hmm. with that bug and, um, naively, <laughs> I was like, how hard could this be? Um, <laughs> This will take me like a year, and it was 2016. Um, so, so yeah, that began after that night. Um, I began researching. I had more questions. I wanted to know 
like why how do we get how did we get to this point how did we get to this point of abortion being such a contentious issue um what is like what happened with roe v wade how did that take place what's all this stuff i kind of hear in the background about planned parenthood um like all these things i had no i really didn't know about um i had to answer for myself and i learned all these i read books and i researched um a lot and that added to my learning experience and the the experience that I wanted to impart to an audience. Like I really wanted to, to share this discovery process or the discovery that I was undergoing with an audience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those are the best stories to tell are are the ones that have impacted you personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just felt like by the grace of God, I, I was never put in that situation where Mm -hmm. I was, I was never, I never had to make that decision or that choice, you know, but I was of that age where I could have very well and of the lifestyle in my past where I very well could have. And many, I had, I knew many people at that point who had an abortion and um, Mm -hmm. many who were a few who were actually very negatively affected by it. I just really empathized with people like me who we went through life without even being told the reality of what abortion is and does Mm -hmm. it just like a lot of Christians, I get it. Like they, they're not thinking about the abortion issue. It's just not a priority. It's not important to them. And they're kind of just on the fence about it usually. Um, So that's my audience really is through observing the pro-life movement and being involved. I really learned that my target audience is the church is Christians and church leaders and it's everybody. But, but I believe that the church of Jesus Christ really has, I mean, the power of God within them to, to love and to, to fight this battle. So Mm -hmm. that's powerful. So uh, we're going to take a break real quick, but uh, when we come back, we're going to talk even more about the Matter of Life documentary that Tracy Robinson has been producing and kind of talk about where uh, where she hopes it goes from here. So we're going to take a quick break. Okay, so let's talk about this week's sponsor, Container Solutions, Inc. CSI makes custom engineer packaging solutions for big and small industries, manufacturing, automotive, military, and even camera gear. Like our camera gear, these guys provided exceptional hard cases with inserts to allow us to safely transport our gear overseas, and they were incredible. You give them measurements for your specific needs, cameras and lenses, batteries, and they use foam, plastic, steel, you name it, to make packaging for your product. Yeah, CSI is a proud sponsor of the Inroads podcast and Appian Media, and we're thrilled to work with them. You can learn more about them at Container Solutions, Inc., Dot com. Check them out. So we're talking with Tracy Robinson. She is the director and producer of The Matter of Life, a documentary about the abortion issue. Uh, Tracy, thanks for being with us. So the next question for you is really, is this a documentary that would have been different if a male director had taken this project on versus a female director. Talk about how you as a female filmmaker can help influence this in a way that maybe a man can't. Yeah. um, Well, honestly, I didn't go in thinking about that necessarily. Um, But over time, I'm like, oh, yeah, I do have, I guess, a more credible voice as a female with this issue. Um, There's actually a section in the film where uh, the, to- the topic comes up about men taking a stance on abortion and how they have responsibility to end abortion as well, um, that it is a man's issue and that often they don't feel like they have a voice and they don't, they feel like it's um, like they're often silenced or, or shamed for even speaking about it. Um, but one of the, one of the people in the film, well, two of the people in the film, they really encourage a man, like a Christian man to step up and take action. Mm. But yeah, in the regular world, like it's, it's definitely painted as a a woman's issue alone. Um, 
And so I, that's, that's a really good point that you make is I kind of have that credibility because of, because of me being a female. So, Mm -hmm. so uh, have you experienced any kind of obstacles being a a woman in this industry when it's still, still predominantly men? You you hear of editors and directors and, and uh, it is good to see more, but Mm -hmm, um, any kind of obstacles that you've encountered? Um, no, I think, I think I've always sort of taken the road less traveled and any obstacles that I faced are because <laughs> I've chosen a, a really difficult topic that nobody wants to touch in the film industry or, um, you know, I didn't go to LA out of film school. I just took a different approach and I never, like, I never thought of it as, oh, it's because I'm a woman that this is hard or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can see how filmmaking filmmaking is incredibly not practical. So, <laughs> so it's like not, um, it's, uh, you have to either make money or, or get out. Um, but, um, I don't know. I've never really thought of it. I thought about that. Um, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. And I guess, I guess that's I, I really good. Think then, that, right? I really yeah. think that as a female, um, maybe <laughs> there's patience with the video editing process or um there's like i often feel like i've had to have a a nurturing kind of spirit with uh with carrying other people's visions or Mm -hmm. their direct directions Mm -hmm. um and just sort of like being a support system i i really feel like and that's not just a female thing but um i really feel like filmmakers have to support one another and um i really feel like that sets people up for success absolutely um, yeah so let's talk uh let's talk post-production for uh the matter of life it's currently you're currently editing it now uh what are your plans for distribution for this documentary yeah i plan to self-distribute um i am currently working on the post-production the visual effects and the color correction um and i really just fell in love with visual effects more and more um just i love after effects and uh at first i was gonna i would my plan was to hire somebody really fantastic to do the visual effects Mm -hmm. and it turns out like i just decided i can do this (laughs) Uh, i can make decent graphics and so it that was a great decision because i'm just having so much fun in the creative space um and uh that's where that's the part that I love is just being creative. <laughs> so, um, and then as far as distribution goes, the goal is to show it at the festival. in I think tentatively March is usually when the Christian F- worldview film festival happens. And so Lord willing, I finish in time for that submission and I'm hopefully, yeah. So hopefully that will be a kind of a premiere type event, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm really excited about. And then um, I, ideally, when the economy opens back up, I would do a um, kind of a Fathom Events type of uh, screening, type of release theatrically. Mm-hmm. I really am passionate about theatrical release. Like, I don't want to go straight to VOD right away. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and I really think that this is not the type of movie that people will watch in their living room, like with family and stuff like that. Right. Um, so I really am, I really um, want community, the community to kind of get on board and um, like rally around the screening. So like youth groups and things like this, um, or, you know, the existing pro-life community or the, the Christian community to really, to go to these screening events in theaters. Like that's, that's ideal for me. Well, you just you just tell us where to buy tickets. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously. Yes. Um, I I can't wait uh, when I get to that point. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, beyond that, definitely DVD and and VOD for sure. <clears throat> mm-hmm. There's a great um, aggregator called Film Hub, where you submit your film and they they do they submit it to different distributors, uh, like. Um, up and coming distributors besides like Amazon streaming and stuff like that. So they, they really take care of all the 
the kind of business behind submitting your film. Hmm. So yeah. Well, and I remember uh, my wife and I went and saw the movie Unplanned, and yes. it was you know it's not one that we were really excited to go and see, <laughs> right? right. Um, because we knew enough about the story. Um, in fact, when we got out, uh, everyone was very quiet. It was very sober, yeah. mm-hmm. and I remember saying to her, I, "I won't say that I enjoyed that, but I am so glad we saw it, and I am so glad that it got made." Um, because people need to see it and they need to think about it. And so yours is one that you're not trying to entertain. Right. Um, and, and maybe people won't gather all their best friends around and, and go and see it, but, but hopefully people will, will be talking about it, inviting their churches, inviting um, those that they care about, um, because these things need to be said. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate very much that you're, you're yeah. saying them. Amen. Yeah, I I really was passionate about like a plug and play experience, like one sitting, you get the entire abortion issue. I mean, you get you get the pro-life point of view. You see um, people that are working in the pro-life arena. You get this this Christian worldview um, perspective in one sitting Um, and you you get to see the perspective of of, a former abortionist. he gives the abortion procedures and he, but he also tells his testimony. So I'm ho- like, I wanted to give information, but also not neglect like, the heart and the emotion behind this issue. So I'm really hoping that's what people walk away with is just like, they're just struck by he- one, the humanity of the unborn child, but also just the powerful heart behind why we're pro-life mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. through stories and through people. So I I really love to entertain as a filmmaker. Like I I really think that's a high importance in what we do, because if we're not gripping people uh, with either just really interesting hooks or entertaining them with a story or something, they're not going to, they're not going to remember the really important information. Mm -hmm. Um, So so I'm hoping that there's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we believe here at Appian Media in the power of what, what we call digital evangelism. And we would love if, if you could share with us, I know we're talking about a film that has not yet been right. finished, but if you could imagine uh, what would be some real world uh, applicable ways that people could use this kind of media to reach people with Jesus? Yeah, one of the epiphanies that I had in the making of this film and watching the pro-life movement was the importance of the gospel. Um, I really, I came across one of the people that I interviewed for the film um, really had a pastor's heart and he as of the worldview that, that making disciples ultimately is what's going to end abort, like what's going to make long lasting impact in people's lives and in, um, the lives of their children and, and getting them out of the lifestyle of needing to have an abortion. Um, and I'm open to a lot of different ways that people want to end abortion. Like I know that I, I know atheists, uh, up in San Francisco who are big anti-abortion, uh, advocates, um, and much stronger than many Christians I know, like they're just doing so much work in the pro-life arena. And, and like, if you want to tackle it from, from the legislative point of view or the pregnancy center world or the church ministry, like I'm not opposed to any means by which we try to end abortion together, but I am very convinced that like my purpose on earth as a filmmaker, uh, is the gospel of Jesus Christ and filmmaker or not, it's, we're here for the gospel and to be ministers of of the gospel and to be salt and light on the earth. And um, I really believe that ultimately it's going to be Christ in his body, like the body of Christ. If anybody's going to end abortion and make it unthinkable, it's the body of Christ. Mm, amen. Um, and so I really am passionate about making films going forward um, that, that edify and enrich the body of Christ to, to inspire them to do something and to 
inform them about what's going on in the world and things like this. So whatever that looks like for me in the future, whatever God wants to do with me, whether it's just editing or directing more stuff or what have you, then bring it on. Hey, don't, don't sell yourself short. Right. It's not just editing <laughs> from another editor <laughs> here. True. Um, no, you're doing, you're doing editing. important work. <laughs> yeah. So what advice would you give to someone who is interested in making documentaries, maybe even documentaries uh, about extremely uh, political or polarizing issues? Uh, what advice would you give to them as they're starting out? Well, when I started this process, I didn't realize how censored specifically pro-life content is with big tech. So think about how you're going to distribute, (laughs) think about the audience. Um, and, um, yeah, like that's a question I have for myself often is going forward. If I'm going to do topics, I'm going to do the pro-life topic. Um, how am I going to get past big tech? Um, like Facebook is not friendly to pro-life. YouTube is not friendly to controversial things like that um is there like i'm just thinking is there an app or a a channel that we can develop as filmmakers that um we can where we can put out content that's not going to be censored like is there like can we create our own channel essentially like on the roku app uh, on the roku device or um on TV where we can like, we have full control over our content. And that's kind of a question for me is like distribution. Mm-hmm. That's always sort of like the, mm-hmm. the lingering thing in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I think, I think for any filmmaker, I think it's really important to know your audience, but also to, to build that audience for yourself, to have like that brand that people trust. So you're not only you're not only just thinking about oh what's the next great script or the next story to shoot. Um, like filmmaking is really fun and great, and like to nerd out on that stuff is so important. But like in terms of kind of you have to think in terms of being an entrepreneur and disrupting the market a little bit and see where the needs are in the market where aren't that aren't being filled by video or films. Um, just sort of think in terms of like, of how you can do things different against the grain of traditional filmmaking. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what kinds of things do you have coming up as we kind of finish up the episode? Uh, what can you share with us about your future plans? Yeah. So I started in January of COVID year. Um, I (laughs) I like that. I started COVID year. (laughs) I uh, started a nonprofit with the same name of the documentary. And at first it was just to get sizable donations that I needed to finish the film. And it sort of is morphing into, well, I can continue this brand maybe and create, I would love to create more pro-life documentary content, especially stuff that glorifies the gospel. And um, I, don't know what that looks like exactly, but I'm excited to see what's next. I'm really going to be pouring a lot of my energy and time into distri- distributing the matter of life. Um, like I want to ride that wave as much as possible and like make sure as many people see it as possible and see what happens through that. Um, I, I think building a team is important mm-hmm. <laughs> first before doing any, any big ideas going further. So. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna see where I'm at after this movie, and but hopefully do more pro-life Christian. Yeah, stuff. and I can tell you're a very well-rounded filmmaker. You're talking about apps, you're talking about um, distribution, all these things that uh, I think there's a lot of filmmakers out there that just say I want to make a good product and that's it, and it's like not think about what you do with it at the end. That's so right. I can tell that you're thinking about all that, and that's really awesome. So. Yeah, I think it's really important for Christian filmmakers right now to be innovative and to to invent their own stuff and invent their own ways of showing their content and not expect that to be an afterthought. Yeah, <laughs> so. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Tracy, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Uh, it's been a great conversation. Thank you. 
Thank you, guys. Join us next time as we continue our conversations with those that are using and creating digital media to evangelize and provide some real-world tips on how to use these kinds of tools in your life to share Christ with others. That's next time on Inroads. Inroads is a production of Appian Media. We're a nonprofit video production company that is 100% crowdfunded. If you're interested in learning more about how you can support Appian Media so we can continue to create more great free content, visit us at appianmedia.org.